What's up with you, Jose Marufo? What's going on with life? Oh, man, just just right here, you know, uh, working every hard every day, you know, trying to make the day. So what's new for you? Yeah, I, I guess I I should kind of build you up on kind of your career. You made a career out of going into gyms, sparring tough guys, and upsetting young fighters who aren't prepared and well. Um, I guess to set the stage for where you're at currently, how do you find your motivations to go in there and upset these young kids who basically think that they're going to be future world champions? You know, that's that's my motivation. You know, I, ever since I started boxing, I, my, my goal is to fight the 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 best fighters. And uh, by saying the best fighter, I, I want to I want to I like to face undefeated fighters because I want to I want to I like to go do an upset. So um, you know, it just every time they call me for a fight, and I see the I see the O in there, that's a big motivation for me to go take down the theater out of their other record. What have you learned when you fight these kind of young fighters that a lot of young fighters don't have that you think that you have a lot of besides like obviously toughness and maybe some experience? What's something that you notice that there's like common trait with young fighters that they typically are lacking? I think you know one of the biggest things that I think is is the is it's the hunger you know the that is that I I step in the ring and and I, I really want it you know I I want it so bad so you know there there's nothing and nobody that that could take that opportunity for me and and um you know everybody everybody has everybody everybody do their thing because uh they're doing for for a purpose you know I doing I doing it for my family for my son and and I think that's a big motivation for me. And you know, it's like it's like I put a plate on of food on the table for my family, and and I'm not gonna let somebody somebody else come and get it for them. You know what I mean? So I think my family it's the big body motivation for me. So then I gotta ask you, what's what's been the biggest win or the most meaningful win for you? Talk me through that story. I've been in so big and big big fights. I've been in. Uh, I've been fighting big names and everybody. Uh, I think uh, uh, my, my most recently fight uh, when when I went to win, win the bell. I think I think that that's that's one one fight I'm I'm gonna remember my whole life because you know they call me last minute. I went over there to California. I made an upset and I bring the bell back home. You know, so that that's one fight I'm I'm always gonna remember and um. And uh, but I've been in really really big uh undercards fighting big names, uh and um, but I think that's that's the most important fight uh win in my career. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you back on this one. I'm gonna give a little context to that. So you beat Angel Rodriguez on last minute, and if I'm correct, I believe that's one of Marv Nation's the promoter's sons. So you came in last minute and it's a belt, and they're probably trying to catch you. Think you Peter froze. My computer froze. Yeah, Am I know. back yet? Yeah. Let's see. Okay, I'm back. So now let me get back to what I was saying. So you beat Angel Rodriguez. It's the promoter's son. They're probably calling you. I don't know the story, but judging from what you say, maybe two weeks out, and they're hoping that you're not really in shape. You're taking it. Maybe you want the money. And then you come in, and I think what's nice to me as an observer is you're a guy that I like seeing get a belt because you've taken a hard path. You've taken hard fights. And then you take the fight from this young fighter, and I think you spoke to it. That's someone that hasn't had to have those adversities of a Gary Antoine Russell fight, where that's a very hard fight. Um, I think that's a special moment for your career. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, um, so I went over there. You know, they called me. And I got to fight. You know, I was, I was the, I was the opponent. Like, like you know, like I was my whole career. I'm always the opponent. So I show up to the wings, and I, I did. Uh, we got on the wings, and then. And uh, the promoter, he came out to me and said, well, th- oh, you know, Jose, I want to thank you for getting this fight. You know, I'm, I'm sure you're going to you're gonna give my son a, a, a tough fight. And I was like, whoa, your son? You know, I, I, I didn't know it was his son. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to my coach and I told him, you know what, coach? We're doing it again. We're, we're fighting the, the promoter's son for, for the second time. It was my second time fighting the promoter's son. Uh, Oh man, and my coach like then that means you you know what that mean, right? Oh yeah, you know I I got I got a word double harder, and um, so yeah we did you know uh I was I was 
200 percent ready. You know, I was uh, um, I was scheduled for fight on January, but then they canceled my fight. So you know, uh, my whole my whole December I was training. Um, I didn't had a good Christmas, New Year, and because I was training, I was busy at the gym getting ready for another fight. The they drop it out last minute, so they come for that one for Angel. I was already ready, so that's the reason I took it. And um, I went over there, man. I was two hundred percent ready for that fight. Who's the toughest guy you fought? Because you've gotten in there with guys like Davishev, who unfortunately is no longer with us. You've been in there with Gary Antoine Russell, Rashidi Ellis. You've been in there with a lot of good guys. Ed Brown is another really good fighter that you fought. Uh, who would you say was like the the most difficult fighter that you faced? You know, I'll say uh, my fight with Max the Dash, that was a very tough fight. And that was another fight that I got at last minute too. And, uh, you know, they called me for uh, two weeks before the fight. And uh, I saw the guy, you know, I didn't see nothing impressive. You know, he hasn't been nobody at that time. So I was like, you know what? I could take this guy out. So, yeah, we got ready. And and we went there. We went eight rounds nonstop in action. I, I was a, that was a hell of a fight. Fight of the night. They they they, they told me, you know, the promoter from top rank, he come out to me, Jose, you're a warrior. You know, you stay ready because I want you to, uh, you're going to stay, you're going to keep working with us because, um, man, it was fight of the night. What what was it about Davishev? Because he fought a couple of people I know, and I, I filmed him once. And the thing I remember about him was he was talented, but the biggest thing was he was mentally strong. And I think that that was his undoing, sadly, at one point in his career. But what, what would you say was the best attribute of Max Davishev? I think Max Davishev, he was a very, he was a very technique boxing. He, he was a very technique. Uh, you know, you could tell he's a very disciplined guy, uh, dedicated. You know, he uh, he gave me at that time the toughest fight of my career, and um, I gave him to the 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 toughest fight of my career. You know, they told me you're like, oh, you gave us the toughest fight of, of his career. You know, the coaches they were they were worried about the on the last round because I was I was winning the fight. They stopped because of the cut on my eye. That was the reason last last minute of the round, and um and um I think I learned a lot from that. He learned a lot from me too. Man, it's uh, it's um, it's very sad, you know, that we don't have this fighter no more. He, he he's a he was a, a really big star in the making, and um, you know um, but uh, I think yeah, that was one of my biggest um, uh, biggest fight. Okay, so now tell me, like obviously when you fought guys like Willie Shaw, your face you get you've had damage from all these hard fights. Tell me about like the importance for you having like a cut man. Why does it matter having a certain cut, man? And what, like, what do you have to think about about not getting cut coming in as an opponent to some of these fights? Yeah, you know, when you was an opponent, they they just looking for any for any excuse just to stop you the fight. They'll look for anything if you have a small cut or a little injury or something. They they'll use it against you to just to stop the fight and, and give the other guy the win. You know, but uh, you know. I've been I have been in that position a lot of times, but you know, um, I've been working with with Freddie Silva, Fast Freddie. Man, he's the he's a he's a man. He he's the man. He saved me from a lot of fights. You know, he, I'll say he won he won some fights for me because you know the, there was time the the referee will try to stop the fight for me, and when the referee turns around to see me, my 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 my, my the blood was gone, everything. And the referee was like, how do you do that, man? Well, you know, Freddie did a good tremendous job, man. I want to send a big shout out to him, to Freddie, because he's a, he's a, he's the one that's been doing all that for me. And, and, uh, and uh, man, I appreciate it. We, 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 we still working together, Freddie Silva. Thank you. And, um, but yeah, it's very important, uh, to, to have a good cut man on your corner because, Anything can happen at any time, and and they will stop the fight. Do you remember what fight, um, in particular? Do you have a fight where you remember Freddie saving you in the fight, um, getting you basically the win and giving you more of a chance? Oh yeah, it was it, it was a fight. I believe it was in two thousand eighteen. 
Yeah, I think it was 2018. I went to San Mateo in San Francisco, and uh, I fought Willie Shaw. Uh, one, uh, he, he was a uh, you know undefeated, uh, tough fight. You know, that's another tough fight that I had to. And uh, you know, I had a I had a headbutt. Oh, I, I didn't have a cutman at that time. I show up at the fight, and uh, uh, we needed a cutman. And so, so Fred, Eddie Rodriguez, one of the matchmakers that got me for that fight. He's the one that introduced me to Freddie. He's like, well, you know, I know this guy, Freddie. He's a good cutman. He can help you in the corner. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So we went introduced me to Freddie. Yeah, we started, we, you know, we started to make each other. And then, like, yeah, I could work your corner. And he worked my corner. That day, that day on the, on the I, I believe in the sixth round, I got a big headbutt from, from Willie. My eye was was swollen, big, big. Like, like I couldn't see nothing, nothing. My, my eye was totally closed, swollen. And, um, uh, the referee, he was, he was doing, trying to do everything to stop the fight. They, he will stop me, take me to the corner, to uh, take me to the corner, tell the my corner to clean up my eye. Uh, uh, to the doctor, I was like, man, they're gonna stop this fight, and, and he's gonna win by TKO. So we went, I went back on the seventh round. Freddie got his tools and everything, but I'm, he started working on my eye. You know, like he's gonna hurt a little bit, but just hold the eye. Started working, doing his job, and um, I could, I, I was, I was good. I was like, damn, I could see back, I could see everything. Everything's good now. And um, the referee came out, used to good, yeah, it's something good. He let me, he let me fight, and that's how, and that's how I finished the fight. Just like going back and forward with Freddie. Freddie was fixing it, and uh, we we got the we got the win by decision. We did another upset. We beat uh, an undefeated Willis shot. And oh uh, man, I gotta say that that pretty, I, I told Freddie you won the fight, you know. So that that that, that victory, I gave it to Freddie. It's a pretty cool story. So now, what's the fight you're kind of getting ready to get into now? You know, we're getting ready. We uh, we um, uh, I'm going to I'm going to fight in, in Canada. So we we're getting ready. We you know we fight on an undefeated fighter. Um, I don't know much about this guy. Uh, you know they got me because. They want to sign him or something, and and they know I'm I I'm uh, I'm gonna give him the toughest fight, and uh so, so they they call me and I I said if the fight we say yes, so me and Freddie my coach we're gonna go we're gonna leave to Canada December um November twenty sixth, so um so this is the next fight that we're, that we're getting ready for right now. Perfect. Mm. That's that's great to hear. Just getting some thoughts for fight fans. You know, fight fans like fights. Bibble versus Zordo. What do you think of this fight? Big fight, you know. Bibble coming off the Canelo win. Zordo, he's a real good fighter. What are you thinking? Give us the pro insight. You know, I, I, Bibble right now. He's a, uh, he's, he, he's very motivated right now with that win he got. I think he's very motivated. He's, he's on the top right now. He feels he's on the top right now, and, and you know, he doesn't want to get up on there. But Sassi Surdo, Surdo, he's a, he's a very, he's very, he wants it, you know, Surdo, he wants to, he wants to be there, he wants to, he wants to, those belts and everything, but I'll say, to be honest, I think Bivo is too strong for Surdo, you know, I'm, it's gonna, it's gonna be a great fight, it's gonna be a great fight, but I think Bivo is too strong for, for Surdo. I think I my think B-Ball is going to take the, the win. Okay, because a lot of people look at the photo and they see Zordo looking like a big guy. He's tall. Uh, I'm obviously a fan of both fighters. I think they're both fantastic fighters. We're just, we're not, we're not viewing them as people to clarify. We're viewing the skill sets. We're not saying, oh, this is the nicer guy. That's the nice guy. Skill sets. Um, I think the people, because Bibble, what Bibble does, it's not flashy. It has no special and, effects. People he, always he, underestimate him. Yeah. I think he just people he just gets in the ring and he do what he gotta do. You know, he uh he's not a he's not a that kind of fighter that's talking, doing shows, nothing. He he he's he's a fighter, you know. And that's why I admire, you know, Bibo is a very quiet fighter. He just gets in the ring and doing stuff. And um that, that that's the kind of person I like. And um and um but I think I think Bibo right now he's he he has the he has the um 
the winning mentality right now because he just be he just be one of the best, you know. Even though he wasn't on his weight class, but he he's confident right now. To me, if he wins this fight, he's a Hall of Famer. If you beat Zordo and you beat Canelo, you're a Hall of Fame boxer, in my opinion. Of course, yeah. Even since you beat uh, Canelo, the first time he beat Canelo, he he's already a, one of my best. You know, Canelo is was it's trying to be was was gonna be the pound for pound. And Bebo stopped him for that. And um, um, he's already on the big names. Okay. Uh, Williams Peta. He beat JoJo this weekend. Um, what do you think is a Peta? It seems like for, they fought at 138, which I didn't know they were fighting at 138. He throws a lot of punches. He's really big. As a fighter, what do you think the potential for Zapata is? You know, Zapata is, you know, he's a, he's a very, he's a very good fighter. You know, he's a warrior. He had a, um, I think I saw him, the last time I saw he fought was when he won, he won by knockout in New York uh, against a guy that was over talking too much. And, um, uh, but, uh, man, Cepeda is, is a, is a, is a great fighter. You know, Jojo, he's a, he's a tough fighter too, but, you know, he faced, he had to face someone that, like Cepeda that was, the, 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 what's a real, real, uh, uh, a, a real fighter fighting on his weight class, natural fighter. So you know, I see, I see. Sepeda, I think Sepeda is Sepeda is a, is a very good fighter. Okay, then uh, Lomachenko, he came back. He had a fight with Jermaine Ortiz. Um, it looks like the size is becoming an issue. These young guys that are big. Do you think that Loma can handle these young big kids like a Devin Haney or a Shakur Stevenson, or do you think oh, the yeah. size is going to be an issue? No, you know, the size is, is never an issue, especially for a fighter like Lomachenko. Lomachenko, he 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 can he he has a he has a style for every fighter. You know, you bring something for him, he he gets you on the around. He he's a very uh smart fighter. He has a, he thinks a lot. Um. I think I think Lomachenko he has he has the 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 style to be to beat up these fighters like like Devin Hain and uh uh Davis. I think uh I I believe the only one that can give him a, a little bit more trouble it's uh Shakur Stevenson. I think Shakur could could beat uh Lomachenko. Well he he basically said that's the hardest fight for him too. He said that in an interview that Shakur is the toughest fight yeah, out there like yeah i think i think uh Chucky, he's like a i'll say he's like a little terence crawford you know he's like the the next Terrence crawford so it, he's gonna be he's, he's gonna be something good who would you have liked if we had gotten crawford spence who would you have liked in that fight oh man that's a good fight right there man but i say man you know i think i i think I think Crawford, Crawford will take that win. I think Crawford has been in the in the ring with with he's been on the toughest fight and and um I just think he's very smart and uh he has everything to be to beat uh Spence. So uh, now I'm gonna ask you some first hand stories. I know you've been in camp with Danny Garcia. What's something people, the fans, might not know about Danny Garcia as a fighter that you would tell them? about sparring him day after day oh yeah he's a he's a water man you know when you get in the ring with uh with danny garcia it's it, it's work it's work you know you gotta get in the ring and, and you know they took me over there because uh i like to throw a lot of punches when i'm in sparring i am a i'm a very pressure fighter so he was getting ready for sean porter that time so they needed someone shorter than danny garcia and that somebody that could fly they they looked me up they they Call me for that fight, like yeah, I'm ready to go, and um, and uh, yeah, we went there, we got we got the job done then, and everything. You know, I was pressing Danny Garcia, I was throwing like a thousand punches per round, and uh, they like it, so they kept they kept me as the main sparring partner, so they will send everybody, all the other sparring partner home. Those keep me, I stayed there for this whole training camp, and uh, man, I would say that was that was a a, a good war, man. I got got power in both hands. He got power. He throws some hugs. Like like he get he surprised you with every every hug that you you fighting. Once you think oh you already got the heavy left hook on on your hand on your face. And man, he's a he's a hard hitter. 
I was surprised how big he was, both in terms of height and the weight of him. He's just a lot bigger than you would expect from being on television to seeing him in person. He is a big dude. Man, believe me, I saw a guy in, in the first thing I, I asked him was, dude, how can you make 140, 148, man? Because, you know, I was, I was I'm fighting at 140, catch weight, 142, 43. And sometimes I struggle to make weight. And I see that guy like, like I was, I was, I was standing next to him and I was like on his shoulders. And I, and I'm like, dude, how can you make, man? And he's like, well, you know, the older you get, the easier it gets for you to make weight. But, but damn, man, I was like, damn. So these are, so that was like, so these all top fighters, they, they huge, you know, for the weight class, you know, they, I, I thought, you know, they, they would struggle a lot to make weight, but. He said, you know, you just gotta maintain your way. Uh, uh um, you just gotta be on certain way the the whole the whole time, and it won't be hard to make way. You know, I I will struggle a lot. I'll fight at 140 and then come back home after the fire. A week later, I was 165, and uh, you know, gain a lot of weight. And uh, you know, seeing these guys, how the see them the they big and they they can make way. You know, that's a big motivation because. You see, like, oh, see, he can make way, and I, I can make, I can make easier, you know. Who do you think's the bigger guy? I'm kind of curious. This Danny Garcia or Gary Antoine Russell? Who's the bigger guy of those two guys? Like in terms of their body and frame? No, no, us, Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia. So Danny's dude. bigger than Gary Antoine. I was just oh, curious. Yeah. I didn't know if he was or he wasn't. No, no, yeah, uh, Danny's way, way bigger than Gary. I, I, I was surprised. I, when I saw him, the, the uh, he was a one forty and one forty eight, you know, and uh, you know, Gary Antonio, he, he has a regular size. He's a, he's he's taller than me. He he has a he has he's tall, but he he's not as big as Danny. I think Danny he's like I I I will I will, I will think Danny was fighting at one fifty four around that way, you know, and uh and uh, he is now, but, but... <laughs> yeah, now he, yeah now he he just went up in weight, but um I guess. It's easy. Yes, I had problems to make way. He was making one forty, so. But yeah, Danny is a, it's a very is is a big guy. Any other uh, guys that you've hopped in there with for sparring for an extended period of time? Uh, another guy that that's big for his weight class too is Terence Crawford. I was working with Crawford when he fought uh, uh um the guy from the guy from Cuba of. Uh, Gamboa. Felix, oh, Gamboa or Felix Diaz? No, Gamboa. Uh, Jurekis Gamboa. And, um, man, Terrence is, is bigger. I think Terrence is is, t- is bigger than Danny Garcia. And he and he fights a 140, 140, 140, you know, 140, 148. 135 for Gamboa. 135. He was making 135. It was a big 135. And, uh, man, I was surprised he was making 135 last time. He's big, big. I people always say Spence is bigger than Crawford. I always tell them, I mean, I think Terrence is about 175. Walk around. Like he's a big, big guy. Yeah. This is, he just has like a string bean look, but that's like all muscle and steel. Yeah. You know, I saw it all, uh on my last fight, like uh my, the last fight I had with with um Rashidi Ellis in Texas. Um I got to meet Spence. Spence was there. He went there to my rooms, he shook my hand, and you know, I took a picture with him. And um, he's not he's not as big as Crawford or Danny Garcia. So, I, but he's wide, he, right? He's yeah, more he's wide. wide. Yeah. yeah, he's he's wide, you know. Yeah, but I, uh, I think Crawford or Garcia, they look they look they look bigger than him, big time. I think the Errol, to me, when I met him, he's like a football player. He's thick. It's like he's he's, he's, it's not his height. It's like no, it's his, I, his height. Yeah. He's because crazy. I looked at him and I thought he was like a middleweight, and then I was like, "Oh, not in terms of height, but in terms of the mass of oh, his frame." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, you know, Crawford is taller, but he's skinnier. Uh, and he's uh, 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 Spence. He looks solid. He look. He looks like a very solid fighter. You know, <clears throat> that's why he's so strong. Yeah, he's good. Um. I mean, that's that's a we all want that fight. What was that experience sparring Crawford? Because I mean, there's a lot of people. I believe I fall into this cap that uh, camp that think that Crawford's the best guy out, and you basically got to spar Crawford 
when he was probably the most motivated, when he had oh, the yeah, most to yeah. prove. <clears throat> yeah, I, I saw a spot. I spot a couple when he was in the best moment. You know, he was he could box. That guy, man, he he could box. He switches from south to orthodox. He boxes. He brought. He you got everything a boxer's need. You know, <clears throat> you you got you, you you got something for him. He already. He already got something waiting for you, you know. It's a it's a very smart fighter, you know. And um and 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 when I got out the ring, I was like, oh no wonder he's he's on the top level, man. This guy is is, is a beast. It's like what I've heard about Crawford is if you're not like thinking with him, but you can't overthink, but you have to like really see what he's doing, you're gonna get really hurt because he punches very hard to the body, from what I heard. Yeah. He, but like that's one of the big things in sparring that my the hearsay gym stories is he will hit you as hard as you've ever been hit to the body oh, yeah. and just beat on you if you show any weakness like he's just gonna beat on you yeah just like every every just like every every fighter you know I learned, I, I learned that from all the fighters you know if they see you they see they hurt you they're gonna they're gonna try their best to try to take you out you know so if they get you on the body, get you on the head, uh, you got you gotta take the punch. You gotta take the punch and you know just keep fighting like nothing happened. Because once you show pain, you're you're done. He, he's gonna finish you. So let's go full circle, Marufo. Are the is it the combination of taking the hard fights and jumping in with there with obviously two Hall of Fame fighters with Danny Garcia, Terrence Crawford? Is that what makes you so tough? Because these kids are coming in, maybe they got 50, 60 amateur fights, but they've had a lot of fights at home, right? People come, hot girls show up, they're wearing dresses, people are drinking, they got shirts. And then here here you are. You might not have a shirt that says Marufo. You might, you may not. Yeah. But you, you've got all this experience and you're like, okay, tonight I'm going to make you earn what you have here. And you want to plant a seed of doubt in these kids' head because maybe at some point these great fighters gave that. Basically, what I'm saying is when you jumped in there with these good fighters and pro fights and in sparring, do you try to present things that those guys have presented to you to these young fighters and make them feel helpless in this moment where all their friends and family are around? You know, um, yeah, you know, I, I learned, I learned, I, I started, I started sparring with, with uh, w w aspiring world 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 uh, world champions since uh, since the beginning of my career, you know, uh, one of one one of the other guys that I had that I had sparred with, uh, Orlando Salido, you know, Orlando City Salido. I think I sparred with him alone a, a lot a lot a lot of times too, cause uh, um, I was a tough sparring and and you know he showed me a lot too. I learned a lot from him. He's a he's a tough fighter. He he's the one that goes. He goes everywhere and fight and gives the best fights of the night, <clears throat> and and that's something I wanna I wanna know I wanna be known for too. You know, get in the fight and and and, and be a fighter. You know, I want people to uh be oh Marufo is gonna fight. He's a very excited fight. You know, you don't see me in the ring. I don't get in the ring now flashy with nice short nice shirts and everything. All, my job is just to to get in the ring and fight. You know, so you know, I you know I, I that's what I gotta do. Just get in the ring and fight, and um, you know, uh, give a good example to to all to all this all these kids. You know, the uh, the um, everything is possible. The everything is possible. You could you could win a fight without uh, you don't need uh you don't need those luxury looks. Uh, all you gotta do is just really want it. You know, uh, you, you gotta do just really want to fight. <clears throat> and I think that's how you inspire a lot of people. I'm curious, before we get you out of here, I got to get a little Salido because Salido is a guy that I see a direct influence to your style. I see you, I see now that you bring up Salido, I see a lot of Salido in your style. Did Salido shape a way that you fight from your experience with him? Oh, he pushed me a lot, you know, he pushed me. I learned, I, I, like I said, he was like one of the first uh, pros that I started, I started working with when I, when I started my, my professional career. Uh, and um, you know, I've been looking his the upset he made with Lomachenko. Uh, all those fights, it's, uh, I see, I see, I see how people how people love Salido when he's in the ring, and that's the way I want to be known. You know, like I I want to get the I want to get the I want to get the the same fans people. You know, when they see me, they say, like, oh, 
so uh, that's another Salido right there, or, or another 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 warrior. And um, but yeah, man, Salido, Orlando Salido, he inspired me a lot for with his big fights and his toughness. What was the best, the biggest fight you sparred Salido for? I, I sparred I sparred Salido for his fight. The first time I sparred was when he was coming back from his big win from uh, Juan Lopez. When he beat Juan Lopez in Puerto Rico, uh, that was the first time I met Salido. He was already a champion. He was he beat Juan Lopez for the second time. So I went to the gym. I went to Fuentes Gym here in Arizona. Salido was training there. You know, they, they called us. They called me and like they needed a good sparring. And I guess nobody was giving Salido a tough sparring. So they thought about me. And they call me, hey, Marufo, you should go come over here and check it out. It's probably with Orlando Salido. And I would just, I would, I would just watch the fight too against uh, Juan Ma Lopez the two times that he beat him. And I was like, why? Wow, am I going to go with Salido? Wow, the guy that just beat Lopez? Yeah. So I went. I, I, I look at Salido like, hey, man, he was like a, like, a, like a hero. I saw him like a hero, man. Like, oh, he, he's Superman right there. And, uh, uh yeah, so we got in the ring, you know. I I, I started doing my work. He liked it. We went six rounds without stop. Bah, 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 bah. He liked it. And then he told me like on his own, he came out to me, he left, hey Jose, was, you wanna be part of my training camp? You know, uh I've been inspiring a lot of these guys, but nobody's giving me the 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 work you're giving me. Said, sure, sure, hell yeah, you know who doesn't want to work with a little and uh and and uh and um Every since then, we come up really cool. We come up cool, and uh, and and uh, every time he will have a fight, he will, he hired me for his sparring, and I will give him. I will try to give him hell of sparring, and he he'll like it. You know, he he was a very humble guy, and um, I learned I learned a lot from Salido, and you know, of course, I fall in love with his style. You know, that's the style that I like, and he had the style, so mm, I just trying to match it cool to hear that because i see the direct influence of salito on you as a fighter final thoughts for any young fighters what would your inspiration or advice be to young fighters you know just just um just focus on 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 what they want to do you know whatever they do, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be boxing you know if they're doing soccer they're playing baseball or the other sports you know just just um just be dedicated dedicated and uh disciplined uh and um, everything, everything is possible. You know, everything is possible. You know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm making my dream come through little by little, the, and the hard way, the very hard way. But you know, everything is possible. If you, every other guy wants to do boxing or any other sport, just be hundred percent and and make sure you really love that. And how can people support you? Well, you know, people can just support me by by I think by, by by watching me. You know, every time when people when I have people cheering for me, that's a, that's a big uh, motivation for me. You know, if I jump into a fight and there's five thousand people and and there's only one guy cheering for me, man, I'm I'm happy with that. You know, and uh, so if you guys want to support me for my career, you know, uh, you guys can add me Facebook, Instagram as Marufo Phoenix. You guys can have, find me. And um, you know, I'll be updating my my next fights and all, but uh, but yeah, anything, any any support is good. Well, awesome! I appreciate you taking time, Marufo, and it was great catching up with you. No, man, I I got to thank you. I wanna thank you. I wanna <laughs> and I wanna send a big shout out to my friend Fast Freddy. You know, he's the one who introduced me to you. And uh, thank you guys for for uh, you know, for have the time with me. And uh, hope to we can see better. We can see us uh more. You'll see me more in the future. Marufo, this was fun. We'll do it again sometime soon.